the last verse of hymn 307. 307 on the last verse. Let not go in the work of love. Send the light. Send the light. Let's gather to the fall of Send the light. Send the light. All together. Send the light. The blessed gospel of love. Let it shine. From shore to shore. Send the light. say? Amen. 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 I, I just want you to know, if Pastor Ashley visits with you for more than two minutes, that means he's taking you to lunch. I just want you to know that. Amen. <laughs> People are getting really nervous, especially Pastor right now. Brother, would you look to the Lord for us, sir? Would you do that? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for the opportunity we have to be here in your house this morning. Uh, we thank you for the word of God, Lord, that uh, is a gift to us, Lord, to uh, give us instruction on how we ought to live for you. Lord, I pray that this morning that the word of God would uh, reign free in our heart. Mm. Uh, it would help us to see your perfect will for our life, even this morning. And if nothing else, remind us of your goodness in our lives. Help us to stay focused on the main cause, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the salvation, Lord, that the scriptures talk about. Uh, we thank you for your working in our lives. And, Lord, even this morning, we pray you continue to be faithful in us, as I know you will. Uh, speak to the hearts. We know that the Holy Spirit intercedes. It knows our needs. And we just give you all praise and glory for what you're going to do, even this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's all be seated. And it's absolutely wonderful to see each and every one of you out. We're also thankful for anybody who might be visiting for the very first time. And... Uh, if you have somebody that you'd like to introduce, uh, this is a great time to do that. Any introductions? Any introductions? Benny has his hand up. Brother Benny. I, I actually couldn't tell you were standing up. That just. Amen. It's sure good to have you, sir. Amen. Well, thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. So good. Thank you, sir, for making, of course, the most important decision of your life. And thank you for being here, for sure. Amen. Any other introductions? Any other? Brother Gary? Amen. Make sure you, amen. I want you to make time to get by and say hi to him. I'm sure uh, you'll be blessed by it. He's truly an encouragement and just a blessing to, uh, to this pastor in Maranatha Baptist Church. Uh, we're thankful for his ministry with FBMI, and uh, we're thankful that we got him down here for a few weeks. Amen. Any others? Brother Will? All right. R.D., good to have you, sir. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Well, that, you're getting lunch. I just know you are. That's the way that's going. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, we're going to be introducing uh, our visiting missionaries uh, in just a little bit. I'll tell you that uh, they are a joy. It's, uh, it, it's been a few months, about back in April, when... I was at Baptist Leadership Conference at Parkside Baptist Church in Mesquite. Uh, we got to know each other and uh, enjoyed fellowship there, and, and uh, what a blessing they are. Anita says she loves them, and you, she's just going to keep them, so I, I don't know how that's going to go, but I think Japan's going to get them. That's where I think they're going to end up, but um, you're going to be hearing more from the Walters family in just a little bit, and thankful to have them with us, and again, make sure, I'll say it again that at the end of the service, but you want to get by their resource table back there and uh, make sure you get a chance to get by and say hello to them. Get a prayer card. You say, well, what's the big deal? I'll tell you what. I know people who have a stack of prayer cards of missionaries, and that's part of their regular praying uh, routine every day going through that stack. And so they'll 
they'll covet your prayers. I can guarantee you that. Amen? Amen. All right, let's do this. Let's share a few more quick announcements, and we'll continue with the service. Faith Bible Institute starts August 20th. Uh, this semester will finish up our ninth year, think about that, our ninth year of Faith Bible Institute here at Maranatha Baptist Church. That's amazing when you think about it. Uh, this ministry has been a blessing to many. As a matter of fact, if you uh, have gone through Faith Bible Institute uh, or you're in Faith Bible Institute or you've even just done an elective, would you stand right now? Let's see if we've got a few people here that, that might be able to just take a look around, take a look around the, here and look at the number of people that have gone through Faith Bible Institute. Amen, amen. We appreciate you guys, amen, for sure. Um, we want to encourage many of our new families and, and uh, uh, individuals who maybe have only been with us for the last year or so or, or even more recently, uh, maybe even today, <laughs> I want you to consider Faith Bible Institute. I really do. I want you to be praying about uh, making a commitment on Monday, uh, that would be your Mondays uh, for the beginning semester. Uh, you'll, you'll meet at 6.30, and for three hours you'll be here for good, solid Bible teaching. I guarantee you, if you'll give it a shot, uh, you, you'll know that this is something that the Lord can, can really use in your life. Notice... Um, if you have any, uh, let, me, let me just go ahead and read this. Uh, if you would like to see what it's all about, basically what I just said, uh, no obligation or cost uh, uh, to join us Monday, August 20th at 630. You can audit that first Monday and you can audit the second Monday. But you know what's even better? See Henry and Sheila. Henry and Sheila, where you at? Raise your hand. Okay. Hen Hen Henry's out there protecting our lives with a, one of those vests on right now in the security. But Henry and Sheila, of course, directors with uh, our institute, uh, will answer all of your questions. I want to encourage you to really take a good, serious look at, at Faith Bible Institute. Amen? Also, Awana Ministry. Uh, be in prayer for Awana Ministry, which is scheduled to start Wednesday, September 12th. Uh, we're looking forward to another great year. Uh, if you're interested in helping in this ministry, please see Commander Gilbert. I just like to say Commander Gilbert. Gilbert, would you, would you raise your hand, sir? Is he in here? Is there anybody? Okay, amen, amen. There we go. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I usually hear his voice before I see him. That's the kind of the way it goes with him. But uh, thanks, yeah. thankful, for, thankful for Brother Gilbert. Amen. Amen. And one more just quick uh, kind of a glimpse into what we want to talk a little bit more about next week. Anybody notice uh, some, some renderings, some artist renderings in the foyer when you walk in? Anybody notice that? Nobody noticed it. Well, that's, okay, here we go. There we go. Uh, they're there for a reason. Uh, many of you know we've been praying about and asking the Lord to show us uh, what he would have us to do regarding preparing for uh, continued ministry here at Maranatha Baptist Church, and uh, uh, since you know nobody has handed you know this ministry five million dollars to build a brand new facility, we're going to do the best with what the Lord has already given us. Amen? amen, amen. For two people who said amen, so we uh, are excited about the upcoming renovation that will be taking place, which will include a a balcony. That's right. Some of you can sit in the balcony and, and you'll think I can't see you, that you can sleep up there, but that's not the way that's going to work. The balcony will come, will come out to that first pillar right there, and this whole platform is going to be redesigned and moved back about nine feet to give us room for more seating. Um, and when we start to swell up during the winter months, it'll be a blessing to be able to, to accommodate them in a greater way. And uh, we're excited about how we can be a part of this. We can partner uh, uh, with Maranatha Baptist Church and, and be very much an important part of this. And I'm going to be talking to more about that uh, next week. We just believe that the Lord can do much with our faith. The Lord can do much when we have great faith. And the Lord can do even more when we have 
overwhelming faith in, in him and trusting him. And so, so I, I want you to already be praying about that. And we're going to be uh, uh, going into a little bit more detail next week and letting you know uh, how you can be a part of this. I can tell you, we believe this is a central and very important uh, and significant next step for Maranatha Baptist Church. And we want you to be, of course, uh, on board and, and, and part of what we believe the Lord's going to be doing. Amen? All right, let's continue with the service. Let's open our hymnals again to him. 299, Rescue the Perishing. 299, 299.
Amen. Let's all stand one more time, please. Amen. Praise the Lord. And let's turn to him. 294, set the soul of fire. 294, 294, 294. Tommy, would you look to the Lord for us, sir? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to come to your house this morning and praise and worship you, Father. We, uh, we ask you to be with Pastor as he delivers your word to us, Father. We ask you to prepare our hearts to listen to your word, Father. Uh, now, as we pick up this offering, we ask you to bless it in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
let's dis dismiss the cute little ones, our children. Jesus loves me. Okay, I'm five, seven, nine. Jesus loves me. What a great special and just enjoying the worship this morning. We have the opportunity now to take a few minutes and have a field report, actually a, uh, a report about getting on the field in a short period of time uh, from the Walters family, a blessing they have been to, to me, I can tell you, uh, just getting to know them uh, in April at Baptist Leadership Conference in Mesquite and uh, Already then, I was talking about getting them down here. Thankful for young couples answering the call to missions. Amen? I'll tell you, that we, we better be thankful because more need to do that for sure. Parents, you need to be thankful if, you've, if your child feels the leading of the Lord uh, to go into uh, serving on the mission field. It's it's too bad that we're not seeing more out and so i'm thankful for this family thankful for what the lord is doing and i'm just going to turn it over now to uh, christopher and uh, let him have it here for just the next few minutes We're going to sing Jesus Loves You, uh, or Jesus Loves Me in Japanese for you. Uh, we just sang it in English, so you kind of stole our song, so we'll, we'll sing it again for you, all right? So sorry you have to endure it a second time, amen? All right, so you want to sing it in English first, so we'll sing it in Japanese last, okay? All right. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All right, here's in Japanese. Shu wa re o ai su. Shu wa tsu yo ke re ba. Ware yo wa kutomo, o sore wa araji, wa gashi yesu, wa gashi yesu, wa gashi yesu, ware yo wa yesu. Well, before I get into the presentation, I just want to say it's quite an honor to be able to be here. Uh, back whenever we got to meet your pastor at the Baptist Leadership Conference, we were very uh, thrilled uh, to have been able to meet your pastor. He's been very kind to us, and uh, we really enjoyed uh, the, the fellowship there, getting to talk, and uh, he's just been nothing but uh, an encouragement to us. And uh, it's just exciting to actually be able to be down here and to be able to see the work that God has allowed him to be involved in. And, and uh, also just for the great time that we had yesterday on a visitation. And uh, we just had a, a blast out there with you. And uh, so on August 6th and August 9th of 1945, America would drop two of the most powerful bombs known to mankind, known as the atom bomb or the atomic bomb, on two of the largest cities in Japan. These would have been uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. On August 15th of the same year, 
Emperor Hirohito would go before his advisors and he would make a request that Japan would surrender to America and that they would take down arms. Upon his request to his advisors, many of them would begin to laugh and to, to make fun and to really just disrespect him in his position there as the emperor. And some would say, do you know who that you are? You are the emperor of the greatest nation in the world and the greatest people in the world. We surrender to no one. But it wasn't until September 2nd of the same year, 1945, that Emperor Hirohito would stand before his nation and he would make the decree that Japan was going to surrender to America and that they would take down arms after the bombing of Pearl Harbor and, and the war that had taken place. Now for us, we don't really understand exactly what all that entails or what that would involve or, or how uh, hard that would have had to have been for him to deliver a message because God has been so good to our nation. We've never had to, to, to face a defeat like that before and for that, I'm very grateful as an American to say that. But something that really took place in Japan when he would make his decree uh, that this was going to take place, he also would state in his announcement that he was no longer a god, for he could not protect his people and his nation from such great harm and destruction that had taken place from the two atom bombs that were dropped. Now for us that doesn't really sound like a lot because obviously we, we believe in the God of the Bible here and we practice it and we're very thankful that our nation believes in that as well. But in Japan, they believe that in Buddhism, that would be the outward uh, religion that they would practice there, they believe that the, that the other gods, including Buddha himself, would give enlightenment through the emperor down into the people. So when he said that he was no longer a god, he began to break the Buddhist religion. But also when he made the, the announcement that he was no longer a god, he also broke the inner fibers of who the Japanese people are. That's what I would like to say would be Shintoism. Many people would know that Shintoism is a Japanese religion created by the Japanese for the Japanese. But in Shintoism, they believe that the emperor is individually selected by the goddess that formed the islands of Japan by her own hands and by the sun god, which is one that is pictured on their flag. So when he said that he was no longer a god, he also broke really their identity, who that they are. A heart of hopelessness began to be born in the hearts and minds of the Japanese people, and they began to wonder, well, what is the future of Japan? If this is the case, if everything that we know of, our fibers, who we are, our identity, and even our religion is broken, what are we to do? They began to wonder who the God of America was. And they began to ask questions and wonder if the God of America would ever come to Japan. From a distance, General MacArthur in the Philippines would see what was going on and he would write in a telegram to the President of the United States of America and he would say that Japan is a spiritual vacuum. If it is not filled with the gospel of Jesus Christ, it will be filled with something that ultimately will bring eternal doom and destruction to this nation. Now I don't necessarily agree with everything that General MacArthur did in his life, but I believe that he at least had that much right. Because he believed that only through the power of God and through salvation and through God's word could this nation be saved and be be, be, be rescued. He would also later in his telegram would request that 1,000 missionaries be sent to the islands of Japan accompanied with 7 million Bibles because he truly believed that the Japanese people needed God's word to be saved. I'm a very positive person I would like to say and I love to think on the positive things of, of it and I would like to say that we completed that earthly commission given by General MacArthur. But I will be very dishonest in saying so this morning. Technically, over the next five years, the last of the 1,000 missionaries would hit the shores of Japan with their version of the gospel. Now, I use the word Christian and missionary in that aspect very loosely. Uh, for in the, the, the world at this time, they would have considered Christianity to be anything ranging from Catholicism to the Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, the Presbyterians, Lutherans, the Southern Baptist Convention, obviously people like us, independent fundamental Baptist churches, all of those would be grouped under that umbrella of Christianity, of those 1,000 missionaries there. That would equate to one missionary for about every 14,000 people. In my opinion, that's a very good number to hold. Of the 7 million Bibles requested, only 700,000 of them were actually sent many of which were never even taken out of the storage containers that they were sent in, and they were later destroyed by the government. Because if God's word would have gotten in the hands of the Japanese people, and they realized that there is only one God, and that comes from the Bible, that means that the emperor would be out of a job. He destroyed the Bibles along with many of the Christians earlier on in history in the 14 through the 1600s. 
Now you fast forward to 2017, the statistics would hold that Japan would boast a great population of 127.6 million people. Of that great number of people, there are roughly only 3,000 missionaries, again, that would follow under, fall under that umbrella of Christianity, but that entire nation. Japan now ranks as the second largest unreached people group in the entire world. It's not Iran, it's not Iraq, it's not Pakistan, it's none of those other stand countries from that region, it's Japan. Over 98% of these people have never heard one clear presentation of the gospel. If you were to take basically who we are this morning, and you were to look at that in Japan, they would make up roughly 0.02% of the population are people like you and I today. Over 98% unreached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm so thankful that God has called us, the Walters family, to be able to go to this needy field and to begin working on the island of Hokkaido. It's the northern island there. Uh, you'll get to see some of the pictures and some more of the statistics. Uh, over 5 million people live on that one island. And the region that we're praying about going to is a region by the name of Dotu. It has one national pastor that lives there, and he is uh, far up in age. He's up in, I believe, up at close to his 80s now, and is having some health concerns right now. But uh, there's only that one man, and then it'll be us. And there's 1.1 million people that live in that region. And that's it. Many of these have never even seen what a Bible looks like. They have no idea who Jesus Christ is, including that song that we just sang about, Jesus Love Me. They've never heard that greatest love story. They've never had access to the gospel there. It would take us, if we were to go out every single day of our life and pass out 100 new tracts to 100 new people, it would take us 38 years to reach that region by ourselves. Would you pray that more people would come and would help us? We need help to reach the Japanese people. These are people that Jesus Christ himself died for. He knew them by name even before they were born, as the Bible would tell us. And he loved them so much that he would take their sin to the cross of Calvary as well. But we're excited that we get to go, to be able to go to Japan and to begin reaching these people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're excited about it. We're about 60% of our way on deputation. We've been on deputation now for about 15 months. And the Lord has just really blessed that we've got a lot of fantastic churches that are behind us in prayer and uh, also uh, by financial support as well. And uh, Lord willing, uh, by the late spring to early summer of next year, we'll have everything accomplished and be boarding the jet plane to fly to Japan. And we cannot wait. Uh, but we'll be working with a national, I mean, with a missionary that's been there for about 17 years and a very seasoned missionary. And so he's going to help us during that time to learn the language and learn the culture. And, uh, and then we'll later get into language school and then be able to, uh, Lord willing, on our second term, branch out to go ahead and plant uh, our first church and begin working our way further into the Dotu region to reach these people with the gospel. Uh, but this morning, before we get into watching our video presentation, I want to leave you with a few thoughts. For those of us in here that are, that are married, what would your marriages look like without access to the gospel? For those of us that have the wonderful privilege and the blessing of having children, what would your children's lives look like this morning without access to the gospel? But most importantly, even as we got to go out yesterday and to door knock and to share the gospel with people, what would your individual life look like without access to the gospel? What I mean by access is being able to just simply hear the word of God, having the word of God in your own language, being able to hear it preached and taught. What you're going to see in our video presentation is just that, a people that have no access to the gospel, a people that are lost, are hopeless, as pastor even preached this morning, have no peace. If you were to ask the average Japanese person on their deathbed where they would spend an eternity, they might give you an answer like this, well, I hope I've done enough. I hope that I've sacrificed enough. I hope I've gone to the temples enough. I hope I've gone to the shrines enough. I hope that I've prayed to my ancestors' uh, attire that was left over from the imperial time. I hope that I've done enough. But really, who can know where a person would spend an eternity? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to pronounce to you this morning, we have hope. We have peace. And his name is Jesus Christ. And I'm so excited that we get to go and we get to tell these people that you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt where you'll spend an eternity. The Bible is clear about it. And we can't wait to get there and to begin reaching these needy people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But at this time, I'd like to go ahead and show our video presentation. Thank you again, Pastor, for allowing us to be here.
Japan is a small, diverse country, home to approximately 127.6 million people. The islands of Japan are densely populated, making Japan the world's 10th largest population. Japan's four main islands and smaller islands are home to many mountains, volcanoes, beautiful scenery, vibrant culture, and welcoming people. However, the heartbreaking truth about Japan is that it is in a state of complete spiritual darkness. Some of the cultural highlights of Japan are the Snow Festival, the Sakura or Cherry Blossom Festival, and Japanese New Year's. Japan as a country has roughly 127.6 million people. Approximately every 34 seconds, a new life is born into spiritual darkness. Hokkaido, the northernmost island, has roughly 5.4 million people, according to the statistics found in 2012. The largest city in Hokkaido is Sapporo, the capital, which has 1.9 million people living within its borders. There are numerous religions in Japan. The most prominent is Buddhism, with 68.7% of the population recognized as believers. Shintoism is no longer recognized as the national religion today in Japan, and now is viewed as a way of life to the Japanese people, with the Jehovah Witnesses, Catholics, and Mormons included. Christianity is a meager 2.2% of the population. 5.5% claim no religion whatsoever. Japan needs the light of the gospel to be spread throughout. Many Japanese die in this country without ever hearing the name and accounts of Jesus Christ. Romans 10:14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? There are 36 different people groups, 18 of which are indigenous and 23 of the 36 being unreached. Many of the unreached people groups are Buddhist from birth to death and never have the opportunity to hear the truth of the gospel. We are Christopher and Kim Walters and have been called to Hokkaido, Japan. We are being sent out of Southside Baptist Church in Rock Hill, South Carolina under the leadership of Pastor Kenneth Walters. We are prayerfully considering the city of Mobetsu, located on Hokkaido, we have been given the wonderful opportunity to work alongside of missionary Alan Meeks with Hitsujikai or Shepherd Baptist Church in Shibetsu. We will be assisting this church plant in many areas of outreach, including track distribution and vacation Bible school. Our short-term goals are to learn the language and the culture. Long-term goals are to plant a local, indigenous, independent, New Testament Baptist church, which will train nationals to plant new churches. We covet your prayers as we seek the Lord's direction in going to Japan and ask that you would prayerfully consider supporting us in our mission to complete the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Thank you for all of your prayers and support. How many are ready to load up and go to Japan? Let's go. Amen. Wow. Talk about the fields being white under harvest. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. As we get into, continue uh, this morning and we get into the Word of God this morning, you be thinking about this family and be praying for them and make sure you get by their table and uh, get a prayer card and uh, have them uh, on the top of your list of, uh, of, uh, for prayer, uh, we're going to just be looking forward to following this family and watching the Lord work. Amen? I would invite you to turn in your Bibles this morning to Acts chapter 1. It's amazing. Well, I say it's amazing. We should never be surprised at how the Lord will tie all of this together. This truly is the, uh, the, the, the clarion call to every Christian 
and that is to go and reach the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, to plant churches and to uh, uh, watch the Lord work. Notice with me, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1. Uh, let's notice these first few verses together. Acts chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. The former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up after, the Holy Go after that, the Holy Ghost, uh, after that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence." When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel, uh, the kingdom uh, to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power... After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into Heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go to heaven. Father, we do thank you. We praise you, Lord. We are thankful for the ministry and message of the church. And in this world in which we live today, this 21st century, the message, we're thankful that in the modern world, the message is more needful today than ever before. The message has not changed. The same message that the Walters will take to Japan, we in our own Jerusalem are assigned to present. And so, Lord, have your way with us this morning and speak to hearts regarding this very important, very, very needful assignment that we all have. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. And so quickly, notice with me, Acts chapter 1 again, verse 7. Notice, focusing on verse 7 and 8. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the, or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power... After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be, what's that word? Witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, for some of you, you might have thought that McAllen was the uttermost part of the earth. Amen? But I guess wherever you're from... It's wherever you're going that would make that the uttermost part. But I can tell you this, for sure, this assignment has not been rescinded, has it? 
Some experiences in the life of every Christian are, are unforgettable, no doubt about it. <laughs> we would like to sweep both uh, under the rug some of those lasting experiences that uh, you know we're not too happy about. Others we remember vividly, and we uh, you know we never want to forget them. Uh, every time you have the privilege of sharing the gospel and and even uh, leading some of the Lord, or let's say that was not an opportunity to lead some of the Lord, or you planted a seed. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience. There's no doubt about it. Well, I'll tell you what. You want to talk about wonderful experiences? There was such an unforgettable uh, scene uh, taking place right here on the uh, Mount of Olives. Can I tell you, this, this great experience that took place near Jerusalem is one that wouldn't be forgotten. Jesus uh, in his resurrection body gave his followers instructions to, to wait in Jerusalem until they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now let me ask you a question. Today let me ask you, uh, when do you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? That's right. Instantaneously, the moment you say yes to Jesus Christ, the moment you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. During this transitionary time, we see that this... Uh, would be taking place, and, and I'll tell you, they were given an assignment. The early church, the first church, clearly was given this assignment. And assignment number one is this. When Jesus had finished giving them their assignment, he was taken, and I love this, this just, uh, I'm imagining what this must have been like. He was taken up uh, uh, and a cloud received him out of their sight obediently. Obediently, they gathered together in the upper room to wait for further instructions. Uh, these people lived by Jesus' last words. I'll tell you, they rode on every word that he spoke. Uh, they rang loudly in their ears and, and lay heavily on their hearts. This assignment was never altered for them or their successors. You see, it remains the basic assignment for his church through the ages. May I tell you this? We are all about, we want to focus on, we want to appreciate... Assignment number one. First of all, the assignment carries a well-defined task. As, as well-defined as this presentation was, uh, we receive our marching orders from the Lord. It was an answer to their question. Will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? That's what was being asked. The people uh, did not have the right perspective for their task. They insisted that God was only for Israel and that their former behavior would prevail. The answer, the answer lifted them to higher motives and methods. And Jesus said, Ye shall be my witnesses. Do we think of ourselves? As witnesses, do we appreciate? You know, sometimes we get the idea when we have a family like the Walters family with us and others. Uh, we have uh, many other missionaries right here uh, in our church this morning. Do we kind of put them over here and we think of ourselves maybe, well, we're just little old Christians. Do we make that mistake sometimes? I think we do, don't you? We are to be witnesses. That's right. When we have the opportunity to share the gospel, we, we don't have to wait for somebody uh, to tell us that that's something that we ought to do. This is our assignment. The assignment was a responsibility. I want you to get a hold of this real quick this morning. The assignment was a responsibility, not a privilege. Now, I consider it a privilege to share the gospel, but I need to more so consider it a responsibility. Wouldn't you agree? You might think, well, it's the Walter's responsibility to share the gospel. Well, you know what? It's Daryl Miller's and your responsibility to share the gospel. We come alongside them. We partner with them. Now, we have our own Jerusalem right here, don't we? We sure do. And you may even answer the call to go to 
uh, the uttermost parts of the earth. The Lord might even be speaking to a young person today about Japan. I would pray that the Holy Spirit have his way with you. But you know what? It's never arbitrary, but it is always a divine command. It is not something that's negotiable or, you know, uh, just to be under consideration. When you said yes to Jesus Christ, you became his. And where he leads, he will provide. But right where he has you, he wants you to know that it's a responsibility to be a witness. Uh, this assignment calls on believers experience with Christ. They understood that they were to testify about what they saw and heard from their own personal experience. There's nothing like your personal testimony. Uh, the young church became contagious in their world. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had that kind of uh, unction to be contagious in our world? Uh, not for their knowledge or methodology or, or their skill and organization. These are all important things, no doubt. But because of their vital witness. You want to know what will make a difference in the Rio Grande Valley? A vital witness. The command to witness is a timeless one. We'll never, we'll never dial back on this. It is not reserved for one day per week or, or given an hour in a designated day. I am all for and I agree with planning to witness. It's a good thing. But you want to be a witness anytime and every time you have the opportunity. It is for any moment on any occasion during any given day of your life. That's right. You can, you know, we usually label every ministry, don't we? We like to do that around here too. If somebody goes and they decide, I'm just going to stop over here at the near, uh, uh, where do you like to stop? Laundromat. How about that? Amen. We have had laundromat ministry. I remember the, uh, um, uh, some of our team when we were out uh, knocking on doors and stuff, they thought, I don't have anybody necessarily to visit, so I'm just going to go hang out at the, la at the laundromat. Well, if you don't get arrested, you might be able to get the witness. Amen. Amen. And we've seen many people get saved here uh, in, in, in restaurants or wherever you might go. To the park. We call it park ministry. Just well, That's right. We make it a ministry and that's what we do. May I say this? We need to be witnesses. The command to witness is a timeless one because it is, it is a 24-7 focus. Don't just think about this, you know, one day a week or or. Maybe for some that would be a beginning and a start. But this is a 24-7 opportunity that we have. We also see that the command to witness is a universal one. I was absolutely fascinated uh, just to get some of the uh, history and background of, of how uh, closely tied in to uh, their false religion, the identity of Japan was. And how today, what an opportunity. The sad truth is, though, is they're moving towards the secular side of American culture rather than the Christ of the Bible. Amen? The command to witness is universal. The Lord did not single out a few of his followers and declare them to be witnesses. He calls each of us. He's not only called the Walters to Japan, but he has called you and I. To be witnesses. I want to, I want to say this. You know, we are excited about doing good ministry here. We're excited about our renovation. We're excited about our choir. We're excited about every ministry that we're involved in. And we're excited about what the Lord is doing. But I'll tell you what, if we ever dial back on the importance of being an outreach church, of being a church that is a witness, of personally recognizing our witness, we might as well just fold up our tent and go home. Amen? That's the truth. So, secondly, the field of operations. The field of operations. Here you go. In Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and that's right, that's right, the uttermost parts of the earth. The nature of the gospel of Christ is universal. Israel had this all mixed up. 
not surprisingly, they felt God was only for Israel. Kind of a nationalistic fervor that is misplaced. Genesis 12.3 indicated that clearly... Uh, indicated clearly to Abraham that God expected his people to be a blessing to all others. They were God's chosen people to be a blessing. Uh, this commission was forwarded to Isaac and Jacob and verified by the prophets of the Lord. The, the guilt of Israel was that, that of, of hoarding their beliefs and their witness. And may I say that Islam, uh, well, Islam is is totally um, a false religion, but Judaism has no witness. They care little about anybody knowing their God. You see, the assignment given by Jesus uh, to his followers indicated that the world, uh, with all the people in it, was their field. We have a whole world that is a mission field. That's right. That one that lives across the street from you and that one that lives across the river and that one that lives across the ocean. They are all our mission field. Acts 1.8 outlines uh, the book of Acts. The young church went to the world. Uh, they went to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and by the conclusion of the book, they were scattered to remote points of the known world. And it was through difficult circumstances that they were scattered. So the next time somebody says, well, my circumstances aren't so great, I'm not so sure that I can focus on being a witness. What if the Lord just took everything away from you and set you somewhere that you had never been before because you were running for your life? Would you be a witness? Would you be a witness? You see, the assignment is not purely geographical, but practical. There's no doubt about that. It's, it's more than an outline of the geographical progress uh, of the gospel. No church can justify a limited perspective and, uh, that, that continues its task uh, to its immediate members and to the people who live a few blocks from their church building. We're all about reaching our own Jerusalem, but we're not just interested in our Jerusalem. Joseph Parker, the late pastor of uh, uh, City Temple in London, insisted that when he stood in his pulpit... The back of his auditorium extended to the Rocky Mountains. And that would be a long ways. In other words, the whole world. The whole world is, is our mission field. Though fields are wide under harvest, folks, there's no doubt about it. The young church accepted this assignment and had both God and the world on their hearts at the same time. May I tell you that... There is a, a need for a renewed fervor and hunger for reaching the world. A moment ago I said, I'm so thankful for a young couple stepping up and answering the call, doing their due diligence, doing their research, learning about the culture and learning about the, uh, the work that they're going to be involved in. But how about you and I? How about we recognize that, that we have a responsibility, that we have a need to have a sense of the lateness of the hour, and there ought to be a, 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 a holy anxiousness about reaching the world. You know, it ought not just be about, well, I hope the music's the way I want it to be this Sunday, and I, I sure hope the special is, is, you know, what I like, and, I, and uh, boy, that air conditioner better be, you know, all this is great. But I'll tell you what, we better be serious about reaching this world. We better be serious about our own Jerusalem and partnering together, being uh, senders, sending out folks like the Walters. We better take this very seriously. You know, when our precious youth had the opportunity to go to Montana, up there in the Chosen Frozen, there were people who had never seen anything like that before, where 
uh, young people are just, and young adults are just out there knocking on doors and sharing the gospel. They thought, no, 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 youth is for, you know, hanging out and, you know, having a little bit of fun. And we're all for hanging out and having fun, amen? But they were amazed that, that we had young people who could just actually walk right up to somebody, just, just start talking to them and tell them about Jesus. And we hope that we were an encouragement to them to do the same thing. Pastor Ashley, when he uh, uh, approached uh, some of the pastors that were suggested to us, they kind of looked at us like, are you for real? <laughs> and they were a little bit careful, and they were a little bit not too sure about us. But once uh, they had a, uh, some time with Pastor Ashley and got to see the hearts of our young people, they could only say this. These guys have a witness. These folks want to do something. How about me? How about you? And so finally this morning as we close, think about this. There is a divine prime promise in this assignment. Well, how, do, how can any of this ever get done? I'll tell you how. Ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power. That's right. It's not in me. It's not you. It's the Lord. 100%. Jesus' followers did receive power. The Spirit of the Lord was poured out on them. It was the completion of the promise uh, found in Scripture. And you and I have the same privilege today. To, to First and foremost, you must trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, folks, uh, listen, sir, you need to get saved. Ma'am, today is the day. Say yes to Jesus Christ. But when you say yes to Christ, when you're born again, when you're saved, guess what? The Holy Spirit now indwells you. The same power that they received, you received. Now, you need to be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, where is an excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. And that's the power that we're talking about. And, and, and a, a demonstration of this power isn't... How, how, how high you can jump up and down or scream or yell or any of these kinds of things. It is, are you a witness? Are you a witness? And you know, this, the, the power uh, for the assignment is an enabling power. The Bible uses the word dudamas, which is where we get the word dynamite. We're to be dynamite Christians. Amen? That's who you and I know uh, we are in Christ. And so as we uh, have this invitation, may I say this, and I mean this with all my heart, as you have enjoyed hearing from the Walters family and you're thankful for missionaries that you know and we're a missions-minded church, get on board. Step it up. Recognize that you, you, you are the church. There are, no, there are no little Christians. There are no small churches. There are no small ministries. The great work that God's called you to is as great as the work that, is, that the Walters have been called to. We're going to, we're going to encourage them. We're going, to, we're going to partner with them and stand with them. But we're also going to recognize our responsibility right here, right here in the Rio Grande Valley. And, 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 and recognize that a balanced church understands that it's, it's, it's right here at home and across the world that we're concerned about. We're getting just maybe a little bit ready for our missions conference that will be coming up in not too many weeks. Amen? May I say this? It's, it's sad when we see churches that don't get this. It's sad when we see churches who say, well, you know, I don't see it's, that it's that important to send out missionaries. And that breaks my heart. A, a church that dials back on missions is a church, I believe, that can't be blessed by the Lord. But at the same time, it's just as important that we recognize our witness and our importance, uh, our, our important focus on staying healthy, spiritually healthy, first of all, uh, continuing to... Uh, Prepare for the ministry that we have right here because if we don't have a strong ministry taking place here, we're not going to be able to help the Walters or anybody else across the way. Amen? 
And so may I say this as we close today and during this invitation, ask the Lord to just prick your heart. If it's been a while, if it seems like you feel like you've cooled off when it comes to this important business, this first assignment of being a witness, guess what? Today is the day to say, Lord, restore this in me. Have your way with me. And friend, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, today, today, come forward. Let us show you from the Bible how you can be saved. Amen? Let's all stand together. As our musicians come, we preach for change around here. Amen? Let the Lord speak to your heart during this invitation. If you know it's, it's something that you believe, that you're supposed to be a witness, but it just seems like it's, it's been dialed back in your life, today's a good day to say, Lord, restore in me the joy of my salvation so that I might, I might get those things out of the way that hinder me, those weights that hold me down, that prevent me from making this my number one assignment. And would you pray, would you pray for the Walters family during this invitation? Take this time to say, I, Lord, with your help, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the job done right here. I'm going to take responsibility for my neighborhood. And I'm thankful that I can partner with the Walters uh, in Japan. Uh, these precious people need you, Lord. And so be praying for them. And yes, my friend, today's the day. If you don't know Jesus today... You want to get saved today. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We pray all of this in your son's precious name. Amen and amen.